Hello friend, how is it going? Welcome back to Auto Resource YouTube channel. Here you can see my own 2011 Volkswagen Jetta TDI Wagon. I bought her a couple of weeks ago. I'm trying to fix her up and finally go smog her and transfer the title on my name. I did a bunch of services, mainly EGR relating cleaning and it's all on this channel already and last week before I parked her I end up with one hard coat it was P0470 which is for the exhaust pressure sensor and it was hard coat that means when I try to erase it it didn't let me so let's go in this video to see where is the location what are the ordering numbers, how to replace it, and hopefully that will solve my problems. Or maybe not. Here you can see immediately the view of 2.0 liter TDI engine and in this Jetta, the model number of this engine is CJAA. Now the sensor is conveniently located right here. And when I looked on the number which is visible from here, I discovered it's still original from 2011 Volkswagen part. When I was performing my diagnostics in beginning, I had the live data and I know that valve was correctly working, but just three days ago, that was the computer system was saying it's bad I couldn't erase it so let's go and replace that I was checking my options I look it up from Volkswagen that will be the OEM part and that was like hundred forty dollars then I saw this is part from a Bosch and it's fully compatible with this engine so I bought this for like $38 on eBay. The number from Bosch is 0281006082. I will begin with removing this cover. That allows me to show you better close up how this whole area looks like. Give me a little bit zoom on it. So you see the flexible pressure pipes which is fantastic that will give us better possibility to work on it we have to disconnect the electric connector then I will release this bracket so I can move it sideways and it will be easier to disconnect it and put a new one there okay let's go for it I always like to help myself to lift this little tab it's a three pin connector, so I will push it away. It's a Torx T30. And this is just to get a better access, which you will see immediately. Uh, there is a way uh, to the clamps and everything. So this is uh, fantastic. They gave us such a possibility to work on it. It will continue with another Torx 30. There is like a bracket holding in place or helping hold these flexible pressure hoses. So I will undo that. That should be very easy. Uh, I can put the bolt there. The bracket should should just swing off or just this pick let's see why is it sticking oh up, 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 up. don't lose it it was sticking to the rubber uh, hoses now I guess I can remove the last T30 I believe that are all three of them Torx T30 and that holds basically that sensor down.
it's going. Another fold, I'm going to put my tool here. And now it should separate. It should, because there is like a little bracket, I hope you can see it. That should be all. Oh yeah. Why is it attached? Now we finally see the sensor itself. You can see one flexible hose is thinner, one is thicker. We saw that on the brand new part. So now we just need to move the clamps down, disconnect it and put a new one in a place. Before I will do that, I will give you again a detailed look um, so you can see what you are dealing with. Let's see how can I grab these little clamps and move them. Okay, that went nice. I work on Toyotas. These are completely different clamps on Volkswagen. So forgive me for not grabbing it correctly. This is not my daily. This is my hobby only, these vehicles. Come on, baby. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for cooperating with me. So here comes that original 2011. It's a 14 years old sensor. I'm just breaking the seal. As I said, this is kind of blind replacement because uh, it seems to be working or having intermittent problems. Uh, as I said, the live data in a certain time and the moment was perfectly showing. The sensor was working. I'm not sure why. Just last week it ended up as a hard coat and I was not able to erase it and continue driving. So here is the new one, the Bosch. You can imagine what the installation is. In this case, the installation is the opposite of removal. But I guess sometimes uh, viewers get mad uh, that it will be not shown in the video. Well, I guess that's, let's show it then. Here is one. Here is the other one. I didn't check. Normally you should always confirm if the electric connector is correct, but I can see it is. So, and I did my research. I really made sure that the part is correct. So is it still filming? Correct. We are recording. Nobody will be mad that I didn't do it correctly. So here are the... It's like a holding brackets. Uh, they help to situate it there. Uh, we remember it started... Uh, this was the last one. Do I have it nicely? The hearts to the back. So... This is how it goes. To satisfy everybody, I will not pause the video and show the results, I guess. I don't know. This is it. Now, there was that bracket, which was still also making sure these rubber pipes, the hoses will not fall off. Is it overkill? I'm not sure, maybe, but never forget that the diesel engines have a lot of vibrations, way more than gasoline engine. So there is way more precautions by the maker to stop those vibrations. If you cannot eliminate them, at least make them less destructive to everything. If you look, for example, on the fuel lines, if you don't put these rubber weights, the dampeners, they can break because the vibration, which is non-stop doing this. So that's the reason uh, I did 
a lot of tinkering with Mercedes Benz diesels in the past. I did sprinters, blah blah blah, and you can see it always. It's present. The dampening and holding things down extra. The engineers do the extra effort to uh, try to deal with those vibrations. So here is the connector. So everything is back. We can see successfully installed that Bosch sensor. I will go ahead and try to erase the code. The check engine light should go off. I will drive it around and I will report to you if this fixed my problem or it's actually problem with the plug DPF or something else. So I did drive here for a while, multiple trips around the town highway and we have again, believe it or not, we have check engine light. She didn't hesitate and she put it on. So let's see what it is. If it's related to the pressure sensor it's not I even don't know what to tell you if this is good news or bad news it's back to the EGR flow insufficient detected it's a one code only so definitely there is no problem anymore uh, with that pressure sensor as far as I'm concerned it's a known problem for these engines having these two codes for the EGR flow insufficient and the pressure sensor is fire as I know there was even a recall for that and under scandal or past the scandal there was warranty and even replacement for free because these codes were happening on many many of these vehicles so I will keep dealing with it Hopefully the next step will be fixing it. I'm just afraid it will be a replacement DPF, but I will probably still try to clean it. Anyway, this video was about the pressure sensor. Hopefully you find it helpful. If you do, please give a thumb up and stay tuned. I will keep filming this car and also the Passat, 2014 Passat TDI, which is outside. Thank you for watching and have a great day, my friend.